Welcome to Toronto Real Estate with Riaz Rauf. It has been an awesome summer so far. The weather is sizzling and so is the real estate market. It is an awesome time for real estate market in Toronto. Lot had been written, lot had been told, lot had been painted the way each individual want to. But real estate market has shown its true colors in Toronto, Ontario. Let me explain what we are speaking about today. Uh, we are going to compare the June 2020 sales figures with June of 2019 over a one year period. In that period, the average Toronto real estate price increased by 12%. Of that 12 months, four months were during the shutoff with the COVID. In spite of that, the real estate prices increased by 12% year over year last year to this year. If I analyze that even further, the average home price last year was 831,000. And this year it appreciated to 930,000, which is an appreciation of $99,000. Simple math, let's divide it by 12. It's $8,000 plus per month. So it's equal to someone earning 100,000 a year or $8,000 a month tax-free income because it's a primary property. For you to get 100,000 after taxes, one has to earn about $146,000. So this is the huge impact of real estate that can create wealth for you in any economic conditions. Of course, we have concerns about job losses, industry shutdowns, uh, certain sectors not being open for business, etc., etc., and the global pandemic that is challenging us. However, Toronto real estate is totally different to Canadian real estate and it's also totally different to any parts of other world, especially the US real estate. So let's look at further details of how the market performed. I said 12% increase in prices. That's overall average. A detached home price increased by 11%. A semi-detached home price increased by 12% a town home increased by 10% and a condo went up by 7%. This is, this is a very rare, a rare phenomenon where we see all four categories of homes appreciating in the same time during that period, which is a huge positive response and a confidence builder in the market. Now let's look at how the market is confidence about real estate. We are not looking at Pandits saying what is the confidence level, different opinion leaders say, the true confidence of the market. In GTA, 38% of the homes that got sold, sold for over asking price last month. What that basically means is the homeowners who are selling the houses and the smart realtor who was helping them had so much of confidence in themselves and the and the market, so they were willing to price the property slightly below and let it compete in the market and maybe two or more people bid for those and sell it for over asking. So in GTA, 38% of the homes that got sold, got sold over asking. When you look at Durham, the emerging market, a huge confidence. 47% of the homes that got sold, got sold for over asking price. Coming into York region, 31% of the homes got sold over asking. Then Halton region, 32% of the homes got sold over asking. This is a huge confidence builder. When I go to places and meet people and over the phone or on teleconferences when I speak to them, they always ask, is this a good time to sell? Is it possible to sell homes? How challenging is it to sell homes? The answer is here. Last year, this time, it took 21 days to sell a home. But this year, after one year, at this time, the homes are getting sold in 18 days, which is a huge confidence booster. Now, let's look at how things would be going forward. It reminds me of a quote that lot, I, mean, I used to learn a long time ago, which said, uh, there are three kinds of people. One that make things happen, one that watch things happen and the other one wonder what the hell happened. So I always like to be in, in the position or try to be in a position where to make things happen. For me, 
my clients and my friends and to my family. Coming into October, November, December this year, this trend could change. We would not see this kind of robust growth in prices around October, November, December onwards. But what we are going to see is certain sectors, not all four categories, certain categories and certain sectors making huge impact and having 10 to 12 percent growth in prices, while certain sectors will have a zero growth or maybe even take a 5 percent dip in the prices in certain sectors and certain price categories and certain niches. So the best way for you to know those is to have a discussion with me. Give me a call. I'll explain to you what exactly it means uh, to be in that position. 647-283-1966. Uh, but let me also, before I end up, give you an example because I generally, ethically, I don't speak about my clients by name or in detail or their assets. But I can speak about myself. And let me give an example of one of the properties that I own. Uh, about four months ago, when we started the pandemic, I think it was somewhere in the third week of March, I did an appraisal of our house, one of our house, and that it came at 1.1 million. And we did take an equity out of the house of 600,000 out of the house. And now we are in the process of investing 500,000 in a smaller unit as an investment, another investment property that I expect to grow over the next two years at at least 12%, 12%, which gives me a 24% uh, gain over a two year period, which, which basically brings me to about 600, 500,000 would go to about 625, by which time I would have made 125,000 after two years. On the other hand, the same investment that was uh, appraised at 1.1 million about four months ago, if I were to take an appraisal today, it would come up probably at 1,125,000, uh, slightly up. However, in January, I expect that to be around 1,050,000. I would have lost about 50,000 to 75,000 equity on that house because the market will be such at that time because there, there'll be a lot of other variables coming into play from October, November, and December. We can talk about those individually one-on-one -on -one because it depends on what category and what house category that you own and what investment that you have. But the case in point is, after two years when I look back, I may have lost 100,000 equity on my primary home, but I would have made about 125 to 150,000 on my investment property. That would even off my asset base and my liquidity base. Beyond that, I would have also had an extra property in my portfolio of investments. So these are the things that people who, uh, who make things happen, got to do. See, in a good market, you can stay relaxed doing nothing. Things may not change much. Things may not hurt you much. But when it's in turbulent times, you know, it's, it's in turbulent environment. When the economy is turbulent, things will change. People will get hurt. People will lose things. People will make profits. People will gain. And most of the, most of the people who have become millionaires in real estate are the people who did the right thing during the difficult times and not during the good times. So please reach out to me. Give me a call at 647-283-1966. I'll promise, I'll be very honest to you. I will speak to you only what I would do for my family and my friends and myself. And I would always advise you to do only the right thing and guide you how well we can move on to the future, thriving, and doing good. Thank you so much for investing your time with me, Riaz Rauf, a household name. Household name, Riaz Ralph, Rushdie Ralph.